So uh, we, we see uh, responsible fiscal policy as an employment stabilization via direct job creation. And we see direct job creation as a permanent feature of uh, policy making. It's uh, because the objectives are to guarantee full employment, not uh, for the short run, but also for the long run. In other words, this is very different from depression economics, which is Paul Krugman's, uh, you know, uh, euphemism that, you know, finally the return of Keynesianism is because we're in a depression. No, we would like to achieve sustainable fiscal policy throughout the short and the long run. Okay, so what is the job guarantee in theory? Let me just uh, synthesize some of these ideas very quickly. There is an alternative to the Nairo. There is, we can use um, an employable or employed pool of labor as the buffer stock, not the reserve army of the unemployed. So I'll explain a little bit what, uh, what that means. Uh, this is the job guarantee. Um, Bill refers to um, this program as a job guarantee. There are various other you know, public service employment, direct job creation, you name it. But what that basically means is that you provide an unconditional offer of a public sector job to, um, at a minimum wage to anyone one who wants to work. This way, as a permanent program, an unconditional program, it maintains uh, and it attains and maintains full employment. Okay, so essentially the features of the job guarantee is that this is a bubble-up policy. This is not trickle-down economics. Uh, it is a policy that hires off the bottom. It deals precisely with those that are either never employed or the ones that are last into a job and first out of a job. So um, it's a bottom-up approach. It operates with uh, flexible markets via a buffer stock mechanism. So this is the part that we need to explain how the job guarantee serves as this buffer stock. And I'm using uh, you know, Bill Mitchell's uh, terminology here, um, who basically you know, made the case a number of years ago that just like any other you know, commodity buffer stock, you can stabilize the price of that, uh, of that stock by simply um, Selling, selling it when it is, you know, the price is too high, buying it when the price starts falling. So you can envision labor as being a kind of a buffer stock where you offer an employment to all those who want a job at a base wage. And as that would be your stimulus essentially that produces growth. As that demand trickles up to the economy and the private sector rejuvenates and starts demanding labor, then the private sector will be able to hire uh, from the public sector pool by bidding up the wage. Uh, once the private sector has you know, been saturated or um, uh, has uh, hired as much as they, as they desire, um, if you observe sort of an overheating economy, um, inflationary pressures, the private sector decides that it needs to downsize, then those workers will be laid off. And instead of moving into unemployment, they move into the public sector uh, buffer stock. So essentially what this program does is it establishes a wage floor to labor. Today, the wage floor of labor is essentially zero because you can hire somebody that is willing to work at a premium above the zero wage that they are earning at the very moment. So uh, this is, uh, you know, we could we talk more about this sort of mechanism, um, but this is a program that then deals with any kind of unemployment that you are um, trying to solve. Cyclical unemployment, the long-term structurally unemployed, seasonal unemployment, as well as the entrance into the labor market, you know, my college students that are looking for a job. Um, <clears throat> the benefits of this program, of course, is that um, it also creates an employable pool of labor, um, and it maintains and enhances uh, human capital. We like to um, always argue that this program offers both a job as well as an opportunity to improve skill, to train, you know, for training and education. It's 